Okay. Uh, usually, the American companies they would like a little shorter for guys. For example, like Drew here, I think his haircut is very, very standard. <laughs> very standard for American companies. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like this is a very good example. But in American companies, uh, I don't like to point people out, but. If this kind of, uh, for example, your hair, maybe in the U.S. company, they would think it's too long. But maybe in Taiwan, it's okay, I don't know. You can ask him. He knows more about Taiwanese companies. But, uh, I used to work for oral company for when I stay in the United States and when I get back to Taiwan, and right now I'm working for Wing Kong. And actually, it depends on what kind of job you are taking. You are, you are, if you're working for an R&D site, they don't care about your, your hair, they don't care about your dress. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you work for a sales function, unfortunately, you have to become very difficult. Actually, you have to uh, wear, the, wear the formal suit and, I mean, good look for the hair and everything should be, should be normal. And this style, now you're sad about No kidding. <laughs> but at least, at least the, you, you must have the black hair first. Oh, so, so guys sh shouldn't dye their hair into uh, another color? For, for the first contact, not suitable. Uh -huh. When you enter into a company, maybe company will allow you to do that. But okay. depending on what kind of position, uh, what kind of job you are applying for. Okay. It depends. For the R&D side or FAE side, you know, the FAE side cannot be acceptable. But for the R&D side, it should be okay. Because you are doing the research and you are doing the developing, you don't need to face some people. You don't need to. You don't need to talk to customers. It should be okay. Mm -hmm. But the first context is very important. You have to wear formal, mm -hmm. and even you have to wear a weird hairstyle. But my, my suggestion is just cut it out. Okay. Yeah. When when you get into the company, probably just the basic you have. Speaking of the firm culture and besides the firm's website, where can you find their firm's culture? Firm's culture besides the website? Yeah, the website. <coughs> where can you find their reality? Well, you, maybe you know a friend that, or a right. friendly friend. Okay, if you don't, then maybe if you want to be really, if you're really interested in a company, I don't think it's a problem because you can ask hey, can I visit the company, or can I... Maybe you can ask the HR, hey, I'm interested in working in your company. Do you mind if we talk about the culture? You can do, if you are very aggressive, I think this is... Would you agree that this is a possibility? Uh, possible, and also, BBS is quite popular, so... Yeah. <laughs> you can check everything through the internet, so right. You will know the company culture. No kidding, and also, before you do the interview, my suggestion is just to go to the website and check the company mission and vision. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the important thing you have to know before you do the interview. Because that's the ladder, maybe the ladder from custom to, to the order, shareholder, or blah, blah, blah. So you must know that. Did you say mission and vision? Mission and vision. Mission and vision. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's a very good one. I agree. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll move on. But basically, all this stuff is related. Okay, so if you have questions, just ask. Okay, before going, these are actually very obvious things. Don't be late. Okay, arrive early, relax, and get there. I've heard of a company, I think this is kind of funny, but um, I have a, a, a classmate in the Zhengda MBA program, and they, they had an interview uh, at a company, and the lady on the phone said, please do not come early. Very strange. I've never heard of anybody saying this, because I think they have maybe the time set very very tight. I'm not sure why they did that. But please be early, okay? Uh, 
This maybe you won't be in this situation, but for example, maybe you'll meet up with somebody, so you shake their hand, and you have to follow them somewhere. They'll probably be, maybe they walk fast, they, must, they walk slow, but make sure you stay with them. Okay, don't get, don't get behind them. Try to walk alongside them. It's just a small thing. So these small things can make a big impression. Okay? Because if you're up with him, it means that, okay, he may think, if you're behind when I'm walking, are you going to be behind when we're working? Okay, maybe something like this. Okay, very small detail. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions about anything that doesn't have to be doing with this? Okay. Um, I said before in the previous part that during the interview, okay, you need to make conversation. You need to be interesting. You need to make the interviewer want to ask questions about you. Okay? And when they ask uh, questions, make sure you ask, answer what he's asking. Because many people, what they'll do is they'll prepare for the interview and they'll have what we call standardized answers. They say, because maybe you've memorized what you're going to say. And you listen to the interviewer and he asks you a question. Maybe it's kind of similar to what you've prepared. And you use your standardized answer, but usually the result is you don't answer the question. So make sure that you listen and you answer what he is asking. So be careful about that. Okay? And usually, when you answer the question, usually follow follow your, your we say follow your gut. Or just come with what's, go with what's natural. Okay? Um, yeah, don't answer more than requested. And we can bring this back to Am I going to go abroad to study? Okay? If they don't ask about this, please do not tell them. Okay? Don't answer more than question. Also, the interviewer probably wants to ask a lot of questions. So when he asks one question, just answer that question. And if he has more questions about the experience, then he can ask more. Okay? So so your suggestion your suggestion is um, show that your Stay in the uh, company for good and show that show that uh, you're staying in the company like per permanently. That's worth your suggestion. Like uh, don't show any um, clue that uh, you might leave or maybe it's kind of like that. But I think that you don't necessarily have to say that you're not going to leave. Yeah, but it really is, it does depend on the position, I think. Do you agree? Depends on the position. Because if if you are wanting to do research and development, you're wanting to do sales, or you're wanting to do something else, then it really depends. Maybe they don't care that you're going to leave. Okay, maybe the company just wants you for one year mm -hmm. and say, okay, do this and maybe you have some certain ability they want and they only need it for a short amount of time. So I think it really depends. Okay. So what if I don't know how to answer the question tomorrow? I answer it along with so how can I be responsible for this kind of situation? Okay. If you really don't know the answer to the question, then I would what do you have to do about this? Since you have interview experience. If he doesn't know the if you don't say I don't know answer and just don't say no, just say, I will keep it back to you later. But don't say, I don't know, or, but don't say no, or you know, just a, you know, just an answer to them, I mean, I will keep it away and back to you. But don't, in front of the interviewer, just say, no, I don't know. So, so, just say. so should I try to answer? No, no need to try to answer right away. Okay. It's not, it's not a people way. Otherwise, if you, don't, don't make any question mark in the interview form. Don't make any question mark inside. That's the kind of the back scene, back image. Because the, they put a they put a question mark. A lot of candidates just, you know, maybe at this moment they have five candidates for the interview. But if you yeah, 